Good morning. You might imagine or think that my first impressions of Appleby started here with me looking out at the congregation. But it wasn't. Let me show you where my first impressions of Appleby began. No, my first impressions of Appleby began from here. Do you know where I am? You're right, in one of the back pews. You see, I know that churches, when they're looking for a new minister, go and listen to them preach in their present congregation. So after getting your information, and I said to myself, well, maybe I should go check out Appleby. So in July of 2013, on one of my study leave Sundays, I ended up coming here and sitting in the back corner for a service. And lo and behold, the first thing that struck me was actually how much this sanctuary looks like Trinity United in Windsor, which was my home church growing up. All the light wood, the large cross at the front, the chancel set up. Imagine my surprise when I later discovered that some people from Trinity actually worshipped here at Appleby, and they transported the bell choir from Trinity here. You see, growing up, I was a part of the bell choir under Phil Horner and really enjoyed it. And not only was there some people from Trinity in Appleby, I later discovered there was also a number of people from Windsor as well. So when you were gracious enough to offer a call to me uh, back in the fall of 2013, in many ways, it was really like coming home for me, coming home to end my career here at Appleby. Now let me show you some of the things I've really liked about this sanctuary and Appleby. One of the things I like about Appleby is your beautiful stained glass windows. And you will notice they depict the life of Christ. Starting with his birth that we highlight for Christmas Eve services, his baptism, and then the calling of the first disciples. This picture here of Jesus on the shore uh, asking Peter and John to cast their net on the other side of the boat. It's from Luke chapter 5, which is very similar to the story in John chapter 21, which is a resurrection appearance. What this window makes me think of is something my mom said to me years ago. I was involved and active in the youth group at Trinity, and it wasn't until many years later that my mom told me something that I had long since forgotten. I was in a play with the youth group, a story about that John chapter 1 passage of the resurrection of Jesus and catching, oh, I don't know, I think it was 153 fish or something. And she said she always remembered my last line in the play. What are we going to do with all these rotten, stinking fish? 
I guess it's something most people don't think about in a sermon. Then we go on and we see Jesus healing others. Then the Palm Sunday service, Jesus' triumphal entry. A wonderful banner saying, Appleby has been here for 196 years. The two beautiful banners for Appleby's beginning and the United Church of Canada crest. And then here to the sharing of the Last Supper, the crucifixion, Jesus appearing in the upper room, and then the story of Pentecost. The last story of Pentecost is the gift of the Spirit on those first disciples, men and women, that Jesus sent out to change the world. Well, lo and that, behold, that same Spirit falls upon us today in all churches, but our time and place, our context has changed a lot from that first story. We need to relearn how to go out into the world. And the starting point for many now, when searching for a new church, is online. So how will churches adapt to the online world? And how will they continue that after it is no longer a requirement from COVID? How do we learn to let the Spirit breathe among us in a new way? Now what most of you know is these stained glass windows are not the only stained glass windows here at Appleby. Let me show you some more. Any idea where I'm going next? Yes, it is here to Appleby's chapel. With a beautiful stained glass window from the old church. As we take a moment now to look at some of the stained glass windows that adorn the chapel. As the story of Pentecost and the moving of the Spirit points Appleby to the future, the chapel reminds Appleby of the importance of its past, its roots. If you look here, you will see the old pulpit from the old church. You'll also see the old baptismal font. And you will find some of the old pews. And if you look closely at these windows, you'll discover they not only depict the life of Jesus, but they point farther back as well. In the top corner is a figure of a person, Moses, standing at the burning bush, as well as the story of the ark. This room reminds Appleby of its rural roots. And if you look at the picture on the wall here in the chapel, you will notice that the third building was actually on the corner of Appleby Line. And does anybody know which road? Yes, it is now the QEW. But what was it before? If you said the middle road you are correct. It is labeled on an aerial picture of the third church that's on the historic wall in the hallway that we will 
visit soon. If you look closely at that picture there, or there's one here in the chapel, you will notice there is nothing but farmer's fields surrounding the church building. A far cry from now. Again, a reminder of how things have changed and how the church also needs to struggle with how to change and reach out in a new way. Now, on my drive to work most days, I would be on the QEW and come south on Appleby Line. And you know what I would pass on my right-hand side? Correct. It says an Appleby Community Cemetery, I believe. But in reality, that was the church cemetery from way back when. I regret I never took the time to walk around it and look at some of the dates and the people. Because I understand that there's people from Appleby's history there. And this wonderful window depicts the story of Jesus. Again, the nativity scene with the donkeys, Mary, children on Jesus' knee, which is wonderful, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the spirit or the dove that holds us farther. One of Appleby's strength is it has managed to remember its rural roots. And it is summed up this way in Appleby's brochure that's been handed out at the Appleby Line Street Festival in the booth Appleby has had there. How would you like to experience the warmth of a small country church right here in the heart of Burlington? One of Appleby's strengths, how do we let the world know? I think you know where I am now. I'm in the hallway that leads to the hall. And on the right is your wonderful history display. I have always loved this about Appleby. And at times I have come here to read of your distant past, your early beginnings, and further on. Now, one of the things that I love, which again points to your strength, is if we move along near the um, beginning of this wall, and here we have a little description of the vi vil village of Appleby. But what else is there? And if you said the knife, fork, and spoon, you're absolutely correct. Church suppers. As people have said, eating is one of Appleby's strengths. And beside it is a picture of Appleby Methodist Church from 1848 to 1906, which I believe would be the second of Appleby's buildings. As you can see, we are back in this sanctuary again. And you need to know that that history wall is not just of interest to you, the members, but it is also a witness to people who come to this church. I've always been amazed at the number of times people coming to Bridge and Euchre or the seniors' lunches have taken some time to look at intently and read some of the history on display there. Now, do you notice anything that is missing here today? And if you say, it's you, the people, you are right. You know, I'm not that used to talking to an empty sanctuary. Maybe it truly is time for me to retire, to get the hint. Now you need to know you are Appleby's greatest strength, the people. 
And I will miss you not poking your head into my office to say hello. I will miss not going out to the coffee group in the parlor or hearing the buzz of conversation. Uh, and that's the Wednesday at 10 group, especially the week you celebrate birthdays because you usually bring cake and you usually bring me some. It's awesome. We're back to that fork and spoon thing again and how Appleby likes to eat. I will also miss the vision lead team two meetings, the seniors lunches, the vacation Bible camp, rummage sale, and so much more. Remember how earlier I said coming to Appleby was a bit like coming home for me. And the first reason was the similarity in the sanctuary, the cross at the front, the light colored wood, the setup here at the front, and how similar it was to Trinity United Church in Windsor, where I grew up. Then I got to know you better, experience that warm sense of community that is fostered here, a warm sense of community similar to the church I grew up in. And it has been wonderful to be your minister for the past seven years. But I ask you to take a moment to remember what it was like to walk into this church for the first time through those doors at the back. Were you a little hesitant? Maybe a little nervous? Maybe scared? Wondering if people would like you? That is a bit about what my story is about today. Saying goodbye, saying hello. But you need to know that you are Appleby's greatest strength, greatest resource, greatest treasure. You are the living word of God made flesh for this day and age. Greeting and welcoming others as you yourself wanted to be welcomed way back when. And that sense of welcome is something that needs to be nurtured each and every day, each and every Sunday. A welcome that is extended not just at that back door of the sanctuary when bulletins are handed out, but also when you see people in the parking lot and as they're walking towards the entrance. Today, people walk into the church community through Appleby's website and online worship. How do we welcome people there? Right now, the sanctuary is empty. And it is a hard way to retire and say goodbye, to not be able to do it in person. But there will be a time when this sanctuary is full again. It will be soon to be safe to gather again when everyone has been vaccinated. And then you will once again be the word of God made flesh, not for the people you've gotten to know really well over the years and whom you probably sit beside week after week, but maybe also some of the people you don't know so well, two or three pews ahead of you, or maybe on the other side of the church. Or maybe those who were just plain curious and dropped in for a while. As was mentioned in the brochure for Appleby United Church that's been used at the street festival, it says about the warmth of a small town country church right here in the heart of Burlington. That is your strength. Thank you for extending it to me. My prayer is that you will extend it to my successor so that they may feel your warmth and love and care as well.